This one will paddle itself because my dad paddled it, Marty. <laughs> now, what, what she's being very modest about, obviously her dad is none other than Bill Mason himself, the legendary canoe tripper. I'm a little intimidated to, to get to ride his canoe. So the, the stakes are pretty high. <laughs> Oh, skip over, skip over. I'm gonna need my life jackets. Oh, right here, need one paddle, probably two paddles. All right, quick, quick, I'm late. I'm just driving up to the lake right now and today I get to meet none other than Becky Mason. And if you don't know about the Mason family, where have you been? I mean, Becky is the daughter to the legendary Bill Mason, probably the founding fathers of what I do today. One of the first ones that used to go out in the 80s, the 70s, and make films of his adventures out canoe camping. But today is not about Bill Mason, today is about Becky, and Becky is very special. She's made a great career as an artist, as a paddler, and today I get to go paddle with her and she's gonna teach me and teach you how to basically step up your game, so let's go. Now maybe you're already a pretty good paddler and you've been doing it for a long time and you can solo pretty well and you can tandem really well as well, but how do you take it from that level to the next one? And that's why today I came here to meet with what I believe is the best instructor in town so that she can teach us that. Look who I found! We got Becky! Hey, hi! So you're here for canoe lessons, are you? I was just telling the folks at home that, you know, a lot of us have probably already been paddling for a long time. Let's say we're pretty decent at it. How do we go from there to being the most proficient and the most efficient paddler that we can be? And today we're gonna to be focusing, I believe, on solo canoeing. To me, I feel like if we're, you're a really good solo canoeer, being in a tandem won't be that much more challenging, right? Exactly. <laughs> if you can do it solo, then you're not working against a tandem paddler. So the comprehension goes sky high. It's just a great way to learn. And the wind's up today, so we might have a little bit of a, an extra added, uh, added challenge. Which... It's a hot strap day, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> She's watching me, I have to do good now. <laughs> I have to impress. There we go. So, so Marty, we, we have a, we're sitting in a, a 16 foot prospector, big canoe, but we're sitting backwards in it. So that's the stern, of course, and that's this is the bow of the front. And it's nice because if you want, you can sit up like that, and you, you've got a tripod effect. You've got two knees on the ground and your bum on the seat. If you can't handle that, your knees are creaky, then of course you could just leave, let your uh, leg up like that. That works very well. If you cannot do that, because some people's legs just don't bend, um, you could put both legs out, but it's very important not to have them too high. It's uh, a bad day when you go flipping into the water. You get a bit wet uh, on your ears. So, uh, what I prefer is to have my center of gravity really low, and I use a saddle bag, just a bag full of foam, and I sit on it. And what that does, Marty, it allows me to trim my canoe so it's more flat in the wind. Today it's pretty windy. So if you're sitting way back in the canoe, it goes up like a wheelie and it blows in the wind. It's already blowing already. So if I sit there, my boat doesn't blow so much. So that's the key to solo canoeing is trimming your boat. To start with Marty, I like to show people how to turn the boat in a circle. And that's a handy thing to know because what, what, you know, you could just go straight, but it's nice to be able to turn and avoid uh, an object that might be getting too close to you. So what I have is two basic strokes in solo canoeing. It's a front sweep and a reverse sweep. I'm just going to show you a traveling pivot. So there's three things to remember with those that front sweep and back is choke up on your shaft, which means slide your hand up, might as well get the reach, place it on the water, and move your body around. It's called a torso twist. That is key to all the solo canoeing. So you just aren't using your hands, you're using your whole body, and your body's better for it anyways. 
So the back one is I lightly touch the back of the boat. This is a pivot point right in the middle of the boat, Marty. And everything spins around that point. So the farther you reach back and forward of that pivot point, the faster you're going to turn. Is it my turn to try now? Sure. Should I try that? So I, I want to try that saddle thing because that's that's probably one of the challenges that people have is, is honestly just kneeling in your canoe is just even even when you're young and 30. Now, and is there a preferred way, like, because, like, to achieve that that edging, um, like, is there an angle to which, or you're just literally on it? Yeah, Marty. What you need to do is you have to think of your lower body facing the stroke. Oh. Facing the side, your just turn your body. Well, that's that, a. That makes your torso twist a little, and it makes it so much easier. So you turn your whole. That is a. Lower body, the knee. Okay, so so point. Oh, okay. That's 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 a great tip there. Now because I'm I'm edging so much, I have to level the camera. There we go. So you so you said out. What is? Okay. Oh yeah. And you just keep doing it. Same thing. Okay. And just a little quarter back through. Uh, cool. Right here. It's a little easier. Okay. Oh, okay. You don't. You don't have to go all the way through. No. Okay. You can, but it's easier that way. You can just get your momentum, keep going. Yeah. So you could get dizzy doing that. Didn't you do that, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> we just did pivots. That's always good to do. Yeah. Now we want to go sideways. Those are called side slips. Oh, nice stop! <laughs> Did you see? So three things to remember with the draw is I want to see the shaft, this part of the paddle, straight up and down in the water. Right angles to the water surface. Then bring the paddle straight into the boat and then go bloop out. So watch it. Draw. Put it in at the throat, where the water line is. Draw, bloop. Draw, bloop. And the bloop is very important. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> All right, I think it's time. Down at 90 degrees. Yep. Pull in. Oh, <laughs> and bloop, okay. And bloop. There we go. It does say. So why don't you draw over to the buoy? All right. That buoy over there. I'm all stressed out now. No, just look <laughs> at that little white thing on the water. Okay. And get to it. Super. Look at Marty go. <laughs> and then you're doing a natural ploy, which yeah. is the other stroke, is you start with it. Uh, at the back and bloop it in and then push it away and that's called a push away i see very nicely done now so so i slice in yeah but i want to keep that 90 degree angle that's you what sure seems do. to keep you very nice and look how far you're going marty <laughs> that's wonderful so why don't you go back <laughs> it's a bit windy but you're doing splendidly oh yeah the first time I kneel this way as well. Well, it's really helpful. And I, I find, especially, especially the the face your stroke. Yes. That's that's a game changer for me right now. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. all about torso rotation. First stroke I'd like to go over um, uh, for going straight, Marty, is the J stroke. And the J stroke is a very hard stroke to teach. So I've arrived at two drills, and they accomplish the J in a way that you understand it so you don't have to be always trying to figure out how to do a J stroke because it it is difficult teaching the J right from square one so the J stroke just to go over this idea 
is how to go forward. So, if you place your paddle in the water and you stroke forward, the boat goes one way, away from your paddling side. So the little push at the end of the stroke, which is at the back, it should make you go straight because it's equaling out that, always that um, motion of going away from your paddling stroke, paddling side. Two drills here, Marty. The first drill for understanding how to do a J. I look at the little decal on my paddle, the little turtle on my paddle, and I take a stroke with it. And I look at it. And I turn it. And that's pretty good. So what I want to see when you do that first part of the drill is I'd like you to have your top hand out over the water and I want you to turn the paddle and push it away. The second part of the drill is the end of the first. Right like that. You do a fish swish. So what you do is this is a dead fish. Nobody wants a dead fish. This is a healthy fish with a fin straight up in the in the water. I'll just show you my little boat. It goes back and forth. Well, why would you do that, Becky? Well, it's so you understand how to go straight with the J-stroke. The main end game is the first part of the drill. Look at the duckle. Makes your torso twist. That's the key. And then you just do one fish swish away. So I go and I just look. Beautiful, Marty. All right. That's the first part of the drill. Now go to the end of the first part of the drill, Marty. Okay. And I want to see some fish swishes. Fish swishes. Yes, it's wonderful, Marty. So now what you do is just focus it. Now do you do it with your thumb pointing yes, down or up? Do. Yes. Down, down, okay. Try putting the first part of the drill and just do one minnow away from the boat. Okay. Like a tiny fish. Yeah. Okay, I think I could do, I could probably do that. I hope I can do that. <laughs> but, but we're here to get better, so maybe the stroke needs a little bit of work. You want me to aim for the buoy, perhaps? Okay, so we're, maybe we start with uh, some of the stuff we've learned already. A little bit of, a little bit of this, okay. All right, so I put it all together. Okay, and we go. You know what I'm just realizing right now is uh, how I used to think I was good. <laughs> I, it, no, but the good news is that there's 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 room to improve, and that's often you know sometimes we fall into our uh, just like anything in life you land into a um, a comfort zone, right? And and then you just ride with it, and then you you never push outside of it. And today we're learning how to break through the comfort zone of what I've been doing for. 20 years now of paddling. A lot of these things, it sounds silly because I'm self-taught. Well, you're a very fine paddler. Most of everything I've done is just me putting together bits and pieces. But I'm looking at you, Skull, around me. This is very impressive. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you the sculling draw, Marty, because you're just mesmerized by the sculling draw. To um, skulls, um, I always teach the opposite. So I. Drawing skull is a drawing action towards Marty, and a prying action is a reverse skull. So I'm going to do two, two ways. Well, generally speaking, I'm putting less angle on my blade, so I'm just going back and forth, and it's doing the same thing as a draw and the same thing as a push away the pry. So watch me do a sculling draw. So that's a sculling draw. Now watch me do a, a, a reverse skull. Those are quite difficult to do. With the sculling draw, just think of a knifing action like this, and then just go forward and back gently. Forward and back with, gently. With a tiny bit of an angle. Exactly. Think of it going back and forth, and then just doing a gentle uh, little 
draw here with your power face and yeah. just go back and forth. And then the reverse skull is a very advanced stroke, Marty, but I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to accomplish it. It's like a ticking grandfather clock. So you go tick, tock, and it's pressure all the time. And it's a very advanced stroke because you're constantly changing the pressure. And Marty, that is difficult. So we'll see how we can do. Let's see. So set the angle and pull it back and forth. So you don't want to be knifing it. You just want to be... Correct. There you go. That's a beautiful, beautiful... All uh, right. And then for backwards... A, it is harder. You were saying it would be harder. It is. It's an expert stroke, Marty. I should be an expert. You are. <laughs> After an oh, hour there you or go. so of lessons, you're doing great. Beautiful. Let's see if I can go backward again. There you go. Awesome. There we go. Beautiful. So that's doing the same thing as a pry, but a, a quite more advanced. For the reverse sculling, a yes. lot of the action comes from the upper hand. And yes. for the sculling comes a bit more driven from the bottom hand. Is that yes. accurate? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's why this side for reverse is a lot harder because it's my hard. left hand. Yes. <laughs> All these more advanced strokes are more subtle. Mm. There we go. You can be doing it perfectly, but you're just a little off. Yeah. And then it's hard. Now, okay. it's even harder because there's a few weeds around here, Mark. Lily pads. There we go. I'm starting to get the feeling of it now. That's nice. What we found out today is that uh, there's a lot more to uh, to paddling than what it might look like. It's and uh, Becky, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to show the the viewers at home a couple of techniques on really. And what, that's what I like about it is that we, even though some were very fundamental stuff, it's really a good way to take us from a certain level and and really get us the focus to the next level, which are in the more subtle strokes and the ones that allow you to weave your boat like you've been doing it. Becky, tell everybody at home, where can people find you? People can find me at redcanoes.ca and uh, I have a nice page about canoeing. You can find little tips about going tripping. You can find tips about my canoe lessons. I teach all summer long at Meech Lake right here. Well, that was super fun. Uh, it turns out I have a lot to work on to really step up my game. Uh, as a solo paddler but one of the things that's very important to Becky is actually to always stay safe on the water and if you want to find out more about it I have a video right here about all the safety gear that you need when you go out paddling so go ahead and click on that and I will see you as always in the next video peace